<laughs> we patriots and void outs. I have come across a number of old reports which make mention of humans who have certain powers, powers which have led to them becoming known as repatriates. As we know, when a human and a BT come into contact, a void out results, which is analogous to the uh, physicists, uh, to what physicists would term an annihilation event. These events occur when meeting when matter meets antimatter. We talked about this earlier. It's like that's why it's called annihilation. Mm-hmm. Is the, the actual term for it? So when they called it uh, the void outs and annihilation, I'm like, oh. They're calling it because it's literally antimatter. Gotcha. The uh, the mass is converted violently and abruptly into energy. The process is highly efficient, though some energy is lost to the production of neurotre- of neutrinos. Similarly, in a void out, vast amounts of energy are released, resulting in destruction on a devastating scale. Whoa! Which leaves behind a large crater. Void outs triggered by contact with repatriates, however, consistently result in smaller craters. Ah, they're explaining why you don't have a, a catastrophic and unreasonable crater that would destroy the game world if you get caught as the protagonist. Because we're the exception to everything, but they wanted to still have that giant dramatic void out at the beginning of the game from that other guy. So they had to, they had to, so they, 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 that's when they just work that into the definition of repatriates. Like, yeah, weird, they have small, they have, they have a... They just have small craters, you know. That category that that only applies to you and no one else in the game that we know of. <laughs> that is kind of a nice little, like... Yeah. It is suspected that this is uh, because energy is lost to the beach in the same manner that it's lost to neutri- uh, neutrino production in a conventional annihilation event. And that in the case of repatriates, the amount of energy it lost is particularly high. That said, how their patriot's body survives intact is a far bigger mystery, and one in which we will refrain from commenting until we have a chance to examine one in the flesh. <laughs> oh no. One notable repatriate is Sam Strand, a former member of Bridges 1, who left some years ago. I was like, is that an I or one? Who left uh, some years ago and has been making his way in the world as a porter ever since. I do hope to get to meet him someday considering how invaluable he could be to advancing our understanding of the true nature of beaches and the Death Stranding. So it pretty much just explains that we make smaller craters. Boop. That's, that's a nice little, like... BTs are reaching out to us. 2.4 million years ago, Homo habilis started to craft stone tools. Hands are so very important, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> our other sensory <laughs> organs passively interpret data. Our eyes light, our ears sound, our noses smell, our mouths taste. What? But hands, hands are different. The touch requires conscious action to grasp more so, to connect that which is in our left hand with that which is in our right, still more. And the handprints we see when BTs seek out humans, why I say that's just evidence of our otherworldly friends yearning to forge a connection. So they're just like feeling us up. They're reaching out to us, attempting to bridge the gap between realm of the dead and that of the living. They're just like, they're all over Norman Reedus then. They're just like grabbing him everywhere. Yeah, just make he has hands on his, on his butt cheeks. That's not nice. This kind of I'm kind my... of offended. Poor Norman. <coughs> getting Ooh. groped by ghosts. That ain't cool. <laughs> I'm just... Uh, oh. I'm just being gross. Keith yeah. just sneezes. Keith, yeah. you, like, you could never gross me out. No. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Yeah. Well, your voice sounds good, though. Yeah, but just, I hate this week of, like, just living with this, the, ugh, the... The fallout. With the sniffles. <laughs> ugh. Getting sick sucks. I don't even... I think I might... Thankfully, the part where your brain's fucked up just goes away relatively quickly, but you just have like, to leave with, like, various shitty, like, drainages for a while. Sometimes <laughs> like, I just have weeks where like, I, I just feel this. bad, and I'm like, I am I sick? I don't know. Yeah. I just exist still, and I'm just like, this week is slightly worse than others. Yeah. I might be sick, but, but this, I the, don't know. This, I don't know what it's like. This adds to one of my interpretations I had a little bit, because I was talking about before where, like, it feels like like the rest of the world might still be out there, and, like, we're weird people that have been, like, cut off from the world in this, like, fucked up, like, cut off of... You know, my, my idea that, like, this is, like, a United States that's been isolated and cut off entirely in world people that are, like, somehow isolated in some kind of separate world and stuff like that, and we need to get back and everything. That whole thing I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, if that's, like, us being isolated by the internet or whatever, 
then like these are the this is like the society the rest of society that's trying to reach back to us and like make connections and that's why they that's why they're all representing hands and they're trying to make a human connection and, and reach us it's like what if the BTs are the protagonists or not the protagonists but they're the good guys in the story and so on what if that's the inversion I keep kind of waiting for that to come out but then that means we're like doing a lot of toxic bad things as a result when we think we're trying to uh, avoid them because we think they're the bad guys so we'll see I do like when games I know it's like kind of a trope now but I do like when games like make you a bad guy without you being aware of it like Shadow of the Colossus ta da my favorite oh, game. Oh, yeah. Maybe you're the bad guy. I love that asshole. game. Asshole. <laughs> stabbing like, people. Yeah, after a while, you're like... Why are you stabbing everybody? This doesn't feel right. I yeah. feel kind of weird about this, you guys. Yep. Bridges needs homo ludens. <laughs> like, I don't... I, it's hard to keep track of Mars these terms. needs moms. <laughs> There's so many terms. Dooms, homo ludens. Wait, what, what was this one? I don't, I don't remember. Go for it. I've already spoken at length about the new varieties of man that have emerged in the wake of the chiral pollution and from the resulting phobias. Homo demons, homo gestalt, not to mention those touched by dooms. This is mu this much is common knowledge. I, however, would posit that we could further categorize the humans of this day and age. Take our comrades, M Mama, Mama and Lachne, for example. They are creators, are they not? People who use tools to make things. Craftspeople. Homo faber. Okay, this is getting like to be a stretch. You can't define people based on their, like, their ho their hobbies. Yeah, uh, this is. <laughs> uh, consider dead man, one who looks the dead in their eyes every day, one who takes their organs as his own, which was like never really elaborated on. His relationship yeah. with death. Wait, is... he does it himself. His. I, I, don't... Thought, I thought he was made. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll never know. His relationship with death is transcendental, sublime. It is, in essence, his faith. And as, and he, as a homo religious, religiosus, <laughs> as for myself, homo loquens, a linguist, one who seeks to understand this world through the language of science and logic. There is, however, another very special type of human, a breed that would serve bridges rather well, homo ludens, they who play, yeah. be it deliberate or unintentional, homo ludens unite people, creating culture, shaping the very world around them, not through violence, nor laws or proscriptions, but rather through metaphorical acts of play. I know of only one person who matches this description, the one they call the Great Deliverer, Sam Porter. Despite Die Hardman's best efforts, however, his whereabouts are still unknown. I was gonna say Luden sounds like like Ludo narrative and stuff like that. I'm like, oh hang my on. Gosh. I was like, hang on a minute. And it's like they're literally saying we're that Sam Bridges is special and the protagonist and so on and superpowers because he's a gamer. He's, he's a the gamer. One, he's the one player in this universe. But you know what's funny That's is, what Homo is, Ludens is in this Those world. In this world, he's just a delivery guy. Why did they think he's a player? Like, what does he do that? It, what does he do in his life that would make him fit the description? I think we're just looking straight through the, the fourth wall here. Yeah. But and Hartman, you can't they, start redefining they just, evolution. They just magically you can't know that start, I'm a player. You can't start like reclassifying people based on their hobbies. That's not how species that's those not how this works play. those who play yeah, can't <laughs> we already had words for all these things they were called the words you said yeah craftsmen what they were. <laughs> and a linguist <laughs> and i don't think uh deadman's like religious i just thought he was a, a yeah. frankenstein yeah he's Hartman's lost his mind a little bit what the hell oh, dude uh, well we're done with this at least we're done with those interviews next go back gonna to be mama mama <laughs> Mama. Are you ready for posthumous mama mail? Oh, that's gonna make me sad. Yeah, she's dead, and she's gonna now explain the chiral network. She only has three. <laughs> she only has uh, three. Okay, I'll. Oh, there's some from Lochna, which I care yeah. less about. <laughs> okay, so here's Mama. <clears throat> the chiral network one. So the core infrastructure is complete. The basic Cupid, ready chiral network setup is good to go. Now all we have to do is connect Central Not City to Capital and prove that it actually works. Sadly, I won't be here to see it. Oh, wait, never mind. I thought just because she thought she was gonna die, but that's not it. No, this was years ago. Yeah, I sorry. Think. Three I, years ago, before the first expedition. Yeah. I've been assigned to the expedition team's second group, so I'll be heading west with the others. But the people in charge here are the best of the best. 
They'll have the network operational inside of three years just as planned, I'm sure of it. And while they're seeing to that, we'll be visiting towns and whatnot across the country and putting the facilities in place for when things are finally up and running. Amelie and the others in the lead group will be forging the connections and laying the groundwork to make sure everything goes to plan. Afterwards, we'll just need to link it all up with operational cupids, and that should be that. Heh. <laughs> it's kind of like the Apollo missions back in the day. They use a three-stage rocket to get to the moon, right? Well, we're using a three-stage process to do something almost as revolutionary. That's... Not... Not the same. Yeah. I think that one of those is way more impressive than the others, but... Well, no, the three-stage rocket is inherently, like... The metaphor doesn't cross. Because it's just, like... Just because something takes three stages... The thing just needs stages. to keep pushing further and further, and those things just consume the fuel, and then they're discarded when they run out of fuel. That's all the staging is, is losing weight as it goes higher. I'm it's, not... it's throwing away the stuff that's necessary for the launch, but is dead weight otherwise, which is a fucked up way to describe people. Um, <laughs> which yes. is what she's doing. Drop that dead weight. Yeah, I guess she's a dead weight that use got dropped up, off. Use she's, them up and drop them she's off. She's just hanging out in the middle of the country and ne neither the destination nor the source. I'm going to uh, describe everything that takes three steps as comparable to the Apollo mission. <laughs> I'm confused. Why? Oh no, she got she got attacked by terrorists. Okay. I had to remember why she when she became ghost mama. <laughs> like when she was uh had the baby and everything. Yeah, cuz cuz when you have an apocalyptic story, you inherently think of those things as being like the moment the apocalypse happened. So it's really easy for me to to replace in my head the idea that like, oh, the death stranding happened while she was giving birth and that's why she got stuck that way. But no, like Troy Baker attacked where she was while she was giving birth is what happened because that that's why that's why it is that she was in previous plans about moving and everything but then got stranded in the middle of the country because mm -hmm. she very specifically got attacked at that location and I had like a void out I think or something uh, I had to remind myself because I was like wait hasn't she been stuck in one place since the apocalypse I'd like rewind whoops these people existed before us, don't you know? Don't you know? Don't you know? Um, Chiral Network 2. It's good creative names here. Um, in a way, the Chiral Network makes use of the beach to allow us to travel through time. See, sending large amounts of data takes large amounts of time, as you'd expect. But the thing about beaches is, well, time doesn't pass the same way in them as it does out here. Might not even pass at all. Think about how the light from the stars Light from the stars in the sky we see was produced thousands and thousands of years ago. Routing data through the beach is like jumping to a point earlier in that journey, thereby cutting it shorter. Much shorter. Just imagine, massive amounts of data transferred almost instantaneously. That's what we're trying to achieve with the Chiral Network in a nutshell. In theory, the network allows us to reconstruct all data that would otherwise be lost, and to do so with fragmented resources. Using what's known as Evo Devo analysis, we could take the finger bone of a dinosaur, say, and extrapolate from that not only the dinosaur's form, but its composition, internal, external, even its thought processes to a degree. Anything's possible with chiral computing. In other words, we won't just be able to reunite a nation, we'll be able to reclaim everything we lost in the Death Stranding. More even. Theoretically, we can go back as far as the birth of the planet and beyond. And thanks to the beach, we'll be able to compile all that data in one place and reduce the processing time for even the most complex analysis to effectively zero. What if the entire game is one person? This is like Osmosis Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, just, we're reconnecting the nervous system so that they can wake up from a coma. I freaking love Osmosis Jones. <laughs> and I would... Ozzy and Drix. I would love that ending. No, uh, we're, Norman Reedus' body the, the whole time. We're, we're, that's why there's little... <gasps> Oh my gosh, the white, uh, they're like white, uh, they're white uh, blood cells. They're white blood <laughs> cells. The white blood cells give us weapons to fight the infection whenever we're doing a boss fight. Oh my goodness. That's why they're white. It's because they're little, they're white blood cells. No one reads this. And that's why all the, it all looks like gunky and infectious. That's why one of our ways of fighting is, is human waste. Because that's how the human body expels toxins. Perhaps. <laughs> oh no, did I just crack this wide no. open? No. <laughs> you, you just wait and see. I don't see. think so. You never know. I don't know what the beaches have to do. <laughs> and so what are you delivering? You're delivering, like, re immunity and resources. <laughs> you're, you're delivering, like, important 
I, I used that, by the way, when I did the, uh, I put up a, a quick one-minute one, one minute video announcing, like, hey, I'm sick, I gotta take a few days off. The background to it, because it was just me, it was just text, the background music was the Ozzy and Drix theme song. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I fucking love Osmosis Jones. It was Jones. fucking ridiculous. I remember our teacher let us watch that in, like, health class, yeah. and I was like, this is not educational, but yeah. I am not gonna complain about this, because <laughs> this is fun. Is it a fever? A cold? Or maybe the flu? Ah, ah, chew! <laughs> Actual lyrics. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> the, the lyrics to that song are fucking absurd. I didn't even know that there were lyrics to that. No, because it's the show. They made a TV oh, show, yeah. Ozzy and Drix. So I forgot the theme song about to Ozzy that. And Drix. Dude, you remember the Men in Black cartoon show? I yeah, I watched that. I fucking loved that show. They didn't show. look like them, so it was annoying. Uh, I liked the art style. It was weird. The art style was really weird. I remember the intro. I love the intro because has all the, the the people posing in like a in like a mugshot picture. Yeah. And they move like left to right, and then it has it flashes and it shows their aliens. I remember liking the lady and being annoyed bodies. that she wasn't in the future movies. Um. Because they like I think they went back and made Man in Black two after the cartoon or something, and like it was like where why isn't there where is she? I got used to her. <laughs> well, I think she might have been based on the victim of the movie or something. I don't know. It was like I, the equivalent of making a uh, Ghostbusters show where like Sigourney Weaver is also a Ghostbuster now. Afterwards, after the movies events or something. There's a lot of uh, after reason, movie cartoon shows I like. Yeah. Like Beetlejuice. That was a good one. That was tonally weird. That was weird. And then they also, made her like a five year old. <laughs> well, they're all cutesy. And weird. they were kind of like in love with each other, which I shipped hard yeah, as a kid. I was strange like, strange things Hell to unpack yeah. there. About children's cartoons. Hell yeah. Drones and the Singularity. Location, uh? Several months ago? Location, yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The bot is good to go. We're putting it through some field tests within the network service area. Should have the results before long. Delivery efficiency within a given region is expected to improve following a successful Cupid connection as well. No. That won't be a problem. The bot's just a cargo carrier. Human input is required to accept orders and set coordinates. Drone syndrome shouldn't be a factor. And the singularity? Not a chance. Well, think about it. AI doesn't die. It might get upgraded and replaced, but that's not at all comparable to death. So it has no reason to fear, you see? The concept is completely foreign, incomprehensible. Death comes to all living things, but only humans have the capacity to understand the implications, to, un to imagine what it means to no longer exist. That's one limitation AI won't ever overcome. That's the reason it won't ever suppress human intelligence. Why wouldn't AI ever be able to understand the idea of it ceasing to exist? I don't know. I do like this one's actually written like an interview for the first time. Like somebody's talking to her and she's asking, ask, answering questions. Uh, I don't think that's how it's supposed to be written. I think she's talking to herself. Maybe, but these are all supposed to be interviews. But none of them read like interviews. It sounds no. Reads, I don't like, think any of them are interviews. I think they're yeah. all like whatever. But I think I think she's just like writing out loud. I don't remember how drone syndrome worked. I thought it was the the reason why those other, the mules are like evil. It's the first message of the game. <laughs> all people put out of work by machines who got caught up again. Get, I was just saying that they, they won't have the same problem that mules have where they get addicted to deliveries. <laughs> like, they were saying that drone syndrome won't happen because people have to tell the drones what to do. Like, it's like, they were, it sounded like she was saying the limitation where the drones can't think for themselves and make their own missions is why drone syndrome won't happen. But I'm like, what does that have to do with being addicted to delivering packages? It's still really hard for me to process the idea that it was a problem that drones were delivering packages. <laughs> like that's a that's a conceit that's in, in this that I like I can't get to. Who's what characters are left by the way? We got. I have to read Malingan. There's only one message from Lochney. Oh wait, yeah, sorry, I Lochne. Lochne and Malingan. She's in the title of her own message. Oh, we have Fragile next. Oh right. <clears throat> uh, Lochne and Malingan. Because that was Mama's name, right? Yeah. I'm gonna call it mama. Because she was malignant. Yeah. She was a tumor. Yeah. I don't know. I was, I was thinking about that earlier. If that was like, if there was a link there for that, but yeah, not to my sure. My body theory, where mm -hmm. we're all Moses Jones. Yeah, but I like Mama. She's okay. She could hang out in in there. Yeah. <laughs> Leave Mama alone. She could hang out in there. Bad to the bone, the bad to the bladder. 
seen to the spleen word on the lips. I don't remember the words. Whoa, he Keep knew. insane. He knew a lot of them. I'm pretty impressed. There's a, a weird part where they have to relate everything to organs in the lyrics. Is that not how all songs are written? Yeah. Um, you know what we used to dream about? Seeing what's beyond those clouds up there? We spend our whole lives beneath the Kyrillium sky. It's all we've ever known, but we also know that the world used to be so much bigger. Our parents told us. They were researchers who worked for NASA, though these days most people wouldn't know what that was. It went up in smoke around the same time America did, and all our parents' work went with it. But we still have our dreams. The one thing our parents gave us that could never be taken away. Mulligan and I were named after a pair of craters left by meteors which struck the Earth 450 million years ago. Well, there you go. There's nerds. The <laughs> well, the parents are nerds, then. Yeah. They have super nerdy names, which is the best kind of name. As long as you're not, <laughs> yeah, named, as long as you're not named Khaleesi. Oh, that's, yeah. That's a disappointing name. Uh, especially Ten now. Ten years from now, someone's going to yeah. see this video and be like, hey. <laughs> hey. Those craters are proof that this planet is a part of something bigger, that we exist within vast, in, uh, within a vast universe. interconnected universe. Like Our names. The <laughs> It don't ew. Our names serve as a reminder of this fundamental truth. Symbols of our parents hope that our isolation is only temporary. That's why we joined Bridges too, to bring people of this country together again, and to one day reunite this planet with the greater universe that surrounds it. Yay. I don't care. Well, you guys are connected now, so there's that. Yep. Congratulations. <laughs> Have fun with that, I guess. Oh, there's only two here. There's a lot of scroll bar left. I don't know who the fuck that, those people are going to be. It just Bridges staff. Is it, is it Bridges hope, staff hope, all the way down? I hope it's not. I hope it's more characters, but I don't know who's left. Brat, I'm not... I may be fragile, but I'm not that fragile. We haven't seen this character for a while. Yeah, I don't know. She just vanished for a while for some reason. I get that it's not her chapter anymore, but she seemed important to the story. Um, <laughs> haven't, we haven't seen her in hours. There's a lot of plot hours. points that aren't haven't been addressed in a little I'd bit. I'd like to see more fragile than... Die Hardman. Well, then, what about, and then BB's dad. <laughs> She's at least entertaining. Frouch is one of the more entertaining characters in the game. I think so, too. Oh, so, yeah. So is, uh... BB's dad. Yeah. Uh, the soldier. That was also another weird thing. She's He was being referred to by a title, but we already knew his name. <laughs> they were still, they still kept referring to her as, like, the, him as, like, the soldier or whatever. The um, veteran, I think. Do you want me to read? <laughs> do you want to read when I was a little girl? When I was a little girl. When I, when I was a little girl, my father told me that preppers were people who decided long ago they couldn't trust their nation to be there for them anymore. That the bonds between us had grown weak long before the death stranding. Bah, bah, bah. We, had, we once had a network spanning the whole wide world that could send items from anywhere to anywhere and connect anyone with anything. But still we were isolated. Still we were alone. Some liked it that way, and even wanted more. Oh gosh. They wanted walls along their borders, wanted to turn away refugees and outsiders. Hmm. Uh, this is really explicitly, like, this is the, the thesis of the game, hmm. evidently. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even, not even vague. It's literally about the refugee crisis that's hmm. right now, and explicitly. <laughs> Video games are political, you guys. I don't want my games to be political. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. Man, I really hate that one time that Kojima got political when he that, made his that, first that one video time. game. <laughs> his first video game ever, the moment he became political. Because, <laughs> uh, uh, because like, like every single one of them goes into different things. Like, like Metal Gear Solid Two goes into like. Uh, online uh, political radicalization and stuff like that, but like Metal Gear Solid 4 is really heavy on the uh, what are they called? The mercenary groups? Whatever those are called? You, the, something ACs, I think. A PMC, PM, yeah, PM, PMCs, private military contractors. Like, Metal Gear Solid 4 is all about those, like the, the way that like the act of war itself becomes a business and a profiteering thing, and then there's entire people where it's like it stops being nations that are fighting wars because they have things they believe in or whatever, which it was honestly kind of never true, but it's like the sub it's supposed to be the pretense of all this to being like a bunch of private contractors that profit off of war and fighting forever and they just change sides to whoever needs people to fight for them and they just make money that way endlessly, which is also those organizations exist now, like that what like White Wolf or whatever, White Wat Blackwater Blackwater. 
I think it's called. Oh, yeah. It's one of those organizations that just does a real thing. Which, by the way, had an Xbox 360 game that was just propaganda about how cool they are, and that was distressing that that got published. <laughs> and really? was allowed on the... Yes! There's a Blackwater game on Xbox oh. 360, and it's really fucking dark that it exists. That is pretty dark it's, that it's it It's even exists. darker than the Call of Duty stuff, because it's literally about the PMC. The, yeah. It's like, oh, I don't like this. It's very biased propaganda. But yeah, like, all of their games have some version of this. Uh... Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 was about the Cold War and so on. Uh, a lot of the games are about child soldiers. Metal Gear Solid 5 had child soldiers in it. And things like that. While also being about a PMC. Because you're the bad guys. Uh, I lost my place. Some even want new nations all their own. Ethnostates, you mean? They began to see the state as an enemy of their freedom, not a protector of it. Libertarians. The ones most far gone, they didn't trust the country to defend them if something really went wrong. War, terrorism, natural disaster, you name it. So they built shelters and stocked full of supplies in preparation for the worst. And the worst happened, the Death Stranding. America ceased to exist, and their shelters became their homes where they would live, and they would die. Wha but while they had prepared, they hadn't prepared to live there forever. Which is why they wound up relying on us couriers so heavily. My father and I wanted to go back to the old America. We didn't want a country that pushed people apart. We wanted one that brought them together. That allowed them to survive, to support one another. And that was what we tried to work towards. Thanks, Fragile. Sorry about the weird torture you went through for no reason, really. Like, because Troy's just a dick. And yeah, obviously. And he's failing to shoot him in the face to make him stop being a dick. Like, he's been really good at doing a really good job at avoiding just dying like he really should. Maybe that's maybe because he's cancer. <laughs> this is maybe, one big metaphor. Maybe you can't kill I him. swear, Keith, if this, if this I mean, ends I, up I, being I've shot thing. him and he won't die. <gasps> and the big boss is a giant body with no head because it's because the brain dead body. This is a coma. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Keith. It's like hands what is, grasping what, on the top of the neck. What is BB they want, then? They want the rest. Like, there's some, they want the rest of their body, their consciousness. Those hands just grasping at the gap where there's no more body. Oh my where their gosh. This is such a stretch. Are you. That's this the theory. Are you Kojima, Keith? No, but this is exactly the kind of shit that can make you. This is how you. This is how you do, like, these, like. So oftentimes kind of low effort theory videos where you just spew out like dumb ideas and you yeah can, I wonder you what really, you're referring to you specifically. can really quickly string together a, a series of pieces of evidence for the dumb idea you Did made you know that uh, Luigi is um, Rosalina's dad yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a real one yeah no I saw that that's around the time I quit <laughs> Ugh. I was like, what? <laughs> no, fuck See, off. In my defense, when I started watching that channel, it wasn't about story theories. No, I will tell all. you, I will it tell you, about, there was a time where I did watch Game no, Theory. No, early, early. Early Game Theory was kind of fun. I like the one about the, the giant, um, the bullet, not bullet, if a bullet bilk would kill you. Yeah. Because of like the, the no, game theory and the speed Sims at which it's going and like the surface demand. area it would cover on your body. Yeah. Like, shit like that was fun. No, C Cinema Sins and Game Theory both morphed because they desperately want to just profit off the algorithm and they had, and they for, for, they focused basically entirely on what would make their channels grow. And so they got really boring. Because, like, Cinema Sins used to be, like, two to... Th the whole reason why it's, like, X minutes or less in the title is because they used to be, like, two or three minute joke videos where they highlighted specific things to joke about and that was the whole premise. But then it just became, like tirelessly ranting about every frame of the movie for 20 minutes because longer videos were more profitable and so they became lazier and lazier and pretty much just writing anything that would fill out the script so the video would be long enough and that it just became this really dilute boring channel uh, and uh, game theory started uh, realized that that like story theories were really popular so that became like all of what well, they did five nights at freddy's came out <laughs> where like for years every video they made was math no, yeah, yeah, like yeah. It was yeah, like yeah, the yeah, bullet yeah, bill yeah. thing. There was a thing where they, uh, 
they're trying to prove how tall yeah, and, yeah. You, like how tall Wario and Mario were or like whether or well, not whether the... whether or not whether or not Mario runs faster than Sonic yeah yeah like I was gonna that. say they had one about like because yeah. Olympic Games one was coming out and they were like comparing their abilities to yeah like how fast like and based on height and yeah shit. like they had to prove how how tall is Sonic and how tall is Mario and how fast they move at top speed in their games which one of them's faster and he was like actually Mario's faster than Sonic as it turns out and that, that kind of stuff was See, that, that stuff, stuff was, was fun. fun. And I then like it's like that. here's twelve FNAF videos. Yeah, I. And then it got worse because they made a film theory channel, and that's just all theory. That's that's there's, there's no video game no, context at there, all. So now it's all shitty plot. There theories. was one film theory video I liked, and it was about the the cinematography in Mad Max Fury Road, and how they used the motion of the cars to lead your eyes to one side of the screen, and then they would switch camera angles, and then the action would be on the side of the screen where your eyes were left off at. So when they shoot the action scenes, that like, sounds like actual film three and not yeah. the thing that they made that channel about. Well, no, but is, that was one of the not, first channels, the yeah. uh, first videos on that channel. And I thought that was actually pretty good. But yeah, so the motorcycle would like veer to the left, and so your eyes would follow the motorcycle, and then in the next cut, the action would be going on, on the left side of the screen. So then I, you could like, move your eyes back over, and then wherever it would cut to, the action would be there when it would cut. So that way they're able to do fast cuts, and your yeah. eyes would keep up. When I hit which my, I thought was like really interesting. When I hit my cap for like how much. Like how disillusioned I'd become with all of that, the channels and stuff they were making, was when they made Suicide Squad. When Suicide Squad came out, they made an entire video, because because of how much they were chasing the algorithm, it always had to be about like what's relevant this week. So they'd manufacture a video even if they had nothing to say really about it. So they were like, which Joker is this? Is is Heath Ledger gonna be? I mean, uh, Jared Leto gonna be? And so. They just explained. His own weird they explained thing. an already existing fan theory that everyone already knew about, where there's a series of different implementations of the Joker, where one's a gangster and one's a psycho yeah. and one's a clown, and it's actually in the text of Batman. There's already been in Batman Batman issues that deal with that exact idea, so it's not even a theory; it's just an actual thing. And so he just explained that for like 20 minutes, just just padding for time, and then he's like. Anyway, see you next week when the movie is out so we can tell you which one it was. And then there was a whole video following up on that. And it's like, this is so much time spent, spent padding for, one, explaining a theory that wasn't even a theory because it's just an explicit part of the Batman mythos already. And also, you were just preemptively making it before the the movie comes out because you'll make get more views if it's out as like having a relevant Suicide Squad video as vi Suicide Squad comes out. And it's like that's all that mattered now. We're not making fun content that ma that meant this or that, and like hyper analyzing really specific, specific stupid things, and having like mathematical proof for a dumb idea that's wrong and stuff like that. But instead, was like just chasing what was relevant every week and like just <clears throat> padding. And it was like I, well, I was it, like I realized I'm like I don't I haven't gotten anything out of these channels for like a year I think. And I was like I'm just gonna unsubscribe. Well, you you for hung all out of them. longer than I did. Yeah, I was like I was like I I should have unsubscribed a long time ago, and then I did. Well, it, yeah, I went from from like quantifiable data to like speculation and opinion, which is like not nearly yeah. as fun. It just got really boring. I liked the math aspect, yeah. but nah. Anyway, I, I have no clue where you were at. We we trashed a popular channel that always goes really well with the comments. <laughs> I, I've, I've talked and his about, wife is named Stephanie I and she looks about, like him <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can't get you over it his wife looks like him yes they look like the same person <laughs> he picked someone who looks just like him but a girl version of himself <laughs> and her name's Stephanie makes me I, mad <laughs> when I see them together I, she looks like she hates she, him I have no idea what she looks like she looks like, she, she looks like him but a girl <laughs> it's like if I was vain enough to find a boyfriend that looked like me who he would be so <laughs> cute <laughs> <laughs> where are you, person? Go find me. This is not where I thought this was going at all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. We're talking about terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no, I finished the whole thing. I was yeah. So I was talking about my theory of it being a body, and then we got to game theory. Did you, oh yeah, you just in case okay. you were worried the podcast stuff wasn't going to be going on during the during the, the the email reading part portion of the playthrough. Is this a podcast and an email reading at the well, same time? Well, because we always we always kind of podcast during this playthrough. Well, this is just how we talk. So that was just that was just welcome for all those people that needed a little break, except for all the ones that are really big fans of game theory. Sorry, not no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Crypto bios. 
We call these bugs cryptobiotes. They were recorded in reference books and databases back before the Death Stranding, and nobody ever thought to give them a proper ca classification. So cryptobiotes, they stayed. They're named for the process of cryptobiosis, which means hidden life. When environmental conditions get too harsh or resources too scarce, cryptobiotes can shut down their metabolic processes and enter an almost death-like state in order to survive. Tardigrades and sleeping chironomids are capable of this too, but cryptobiotes are on a whole other level. They can survive anything they can survive anything and anywhere, even on the beach or in the seam, and they aren't capable of prolonging only their own lives. Humans who eat them acquire a limited resistance to timefall too. You won't find them lying around just anywhere though. You need to know where to look. Not many people even know they exist until recently. So next to no research has been done. But now that their beneficial properties have been recognized, I'm willing to bet they'll play an important role in helping us to understand the beach, the Death Stranding, and everything else. They said it. They said tardigrades. tardigrades yeah. yeah. Like they, they mentioned them. I was like, because these are these are just giant tardigrades, right? Because <laughs> tardigrades are like microscopic. You can't see them, but they're just neat. They're jiggly water bears. They're adorable little I, buggos. I, they just keep showing up and stuff. And people were saying that it was the Bernie Madoff effect, but I don't think it is. I think tardigrades just weren't in media as much like 10 years ago, and this decade they're weird well, they keep showing up. I don't think up. they were known about as much 10 years ago. I, yeah. think, I think they boosted in popularity since there's been more research done on yeah. them. Like I, I think they are more relevant. Tardigrade. Like there was tardigrades in Ant-Man, like he rides on one and stuff. Yeah. And then it's like... Uh, oops. Star Trek Discovery. Like there was a tardigrade. Oh, he's it was like a cute. big, it was like a big bear-sized one. Well, I think there's a few reasons. One being that they're actually really important uh, in like scientific research, but secondarily, they are fucking adorable. Yeah. Um, and then they're also so. It's like it's not even just tardigrades, but super-sized tardigrades keep happening well, they, and stuff. That's what I was gonna say. Is they translate really well into a creature. Like like a lot of our. Yeah, it looks like a Star micro... Wars monster, but they just look like that. A lot of our microbiology it's like a big jiggly creature. Is, uh, doesn't translate well to big sizes. They're neat, but they just keep showing up all the time. The Bridges staff. Are you ready for the boring part? <laughs> I hope it's not just the rest of the screen as that, but it might be. Maybe it's a variety of colorful characters with differing personalities that we can read through the text. Uh, I hope it has that couple that That's hate each other. <laughs> I don't think that was, those those weren't Brit, but those weren't Bridges staff. No, though. I know, I know. I'm just being hopeful. Because those were preppers. Benjamin Hancock. I don't remember who that is. Benny Hanny. Benny Hanna's. I think he's the guy at the middle base of the first screen. Yeah. See. Like the, there's two maps so far, basically not counting the tiny one we're in right now, and the first map had a tiny base in the middle. We had to do missions for him because we're trying to get our bots, even though we immediately started beating the game afterwards, so it was pointless. <laughs> Wee! Wee! Benjamin Hancock. Two years ago, distribution center west of Capital Not City. Yeah, it, the name even refers to the location. Makes it, it really easy to tell what we're talking about because Capital Not City is where we started the, at the very beginning. After. All these dumb cities with their names yep. that sound so similar. It's been about a year now since we came here for the rear guard. The first folks di through did us the favor of setting up the Cairo relay and patching things up before we arrived, so we're doing all right. Not sure about everyone else, though. Folks back home sound kind of freaked out. We don't know what's going on in Central and Capital, let alone how Amelie and the others who keep heading west are doing. But something doesn't feel right. What's more, a lot of the guys have developed some kind of agoraphobia. Like the thought alone of going outside scares the shit out of them. See, the distro centers and way stations around these parts here aren't like the ones back east. They're much more isolated, out in the middle of nowhere. Can't help but feel cut off from the world. There's not a lot of staff on hand either. Neither. Which is the same. It's, it's, it's the same meaning anyway. Which means you often have to go to, uh, have to do the work of two guys. I bet you can't relate <laughs> to dealing with that problem every day at work. Yeah, I'm just, I'm a one-person powerhouse. Which can make it that much lonelier, too. Then you factor in the terrorism rumors. Also, is it just me, 
Or does it feel like there's more mules out there these days? Don't get me wrong, I know there's not... They're not out to get us. All they want is our cargo, right? Yeah, they're not out to get us, which is why they shoot me with guns. They're not out to get you. What are you guns. talking about? They shoot me with guns. And, guns. And? That was look at the, uh, was looking at the micro, micro, the mic microwaves, meter, the, microwave, the, the volume meter, the microphones. Microwave. Whenever I talk, it looks like both of the micro, my microwaves light up like equally. Microwaves. And I'm like confused because I'm like, how am I picking up on both of them equally? How, is this my power of my voice? I don't think he talks so much louder than I do. And yet. Or does he? But if I whisper into it, yours doesn't go up. It kind of does, though. It, it does kind of do that, though. <clears throat> Yours has turned up higher than mine to, uh, to hi, help everybody. you pick up more. This is my ASMR. This is my <laughs> ASMR. We're completely off topic. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a lot of emails. Uh, but yeah, they're not allowed to get us. <laughs> they fucking shoot me with guns. To death. And then yeah. I come back because I'm a repatriate. It's fucked up. Doesn't change the fact they're not making our work any easier. Especially since a lot of these guys used to be first-rate porters that could run the rings around us if they hadn't, you know... Still, for now, the network systems are up and running, and we're just holding out for the day when the second expedition comes through with the working Cupid. Till then, we'll keep things chugging along. That much we can do for bridges and country, am I right? Yeah, bro, am I right? Well, I'll, I'll be Igor. Okay, I'm Igor. Igor, brother of dead boy. Wait, is the Igor the dead guy? cops ask my name, bitch. I'm Igor. Huh? Wait, I think Igor's the dead guy. Yeah. Aww. Uh, yes, yeah, so I want to be him. He's the void out guy. Uh, I went and saw Tyler the Creator on his Igor concert <laughs> I tour. I thought that was what the email said at first. I went and saw Tyler the Creator. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to mention, throw that out there really quick. Anyways, it's a great concert. I had a fun. <clears throat> Album's okay. Like some of the songs a lot. Okay. Igor. Um, I volunteered to join Bridges, signed up with my brother, Victor. See, we both remembered when America was still America, when we still had planes and satellites, when we were still connected to everyone and everything. The world was different, bigger, and we wanted it back. He had chosen for the first expedition and hit the road damn near straight away. Me, I got to hang back here in Central, which was okay, I guess. Uh, corpse disposal means taking your fair share of time fall in the line of duty. You get a sense for it after a while. A sixth sense for when the clouds are about to open up. Of course, the clouds themselves are a big tale. And an inverse rainbow is a guarantee you're in for some shit. But there are smaller signs, too. Changes in the air. A smell in the wind. When it hits, you've got power outages to deal with. Far as I understand it. Which ain't all that far. It's to do with high concentrations of chirillium causing electromagnetic inference or something. Which also interacts with water and kicks up clouds of ozone. Which then makes the temperature drop like a rock. Anyway, I may be used to time fall, but that don't mean I'm immune to it. Believe me, I'm younger than I look. <laughs> My big bro would take a lot of pleasure in telling you that if you could see me now. You guys not spend time around each other? They were in the same region. Well, n no. Remember they had like a weird thing where he's like, I gave him a keychain, but I haven't seen him in a long time. No, because they like were like a mile apart. <laughs> like they were I, so well, close it, it's like, in it, a world where his job is to deliver things and they're in a small region. Well, Keith, it's like that girl that was like, I haven't seen my husband, my love forever. Yeah, and they were like, but unlike everyone else, Igor goes outside. Away. Yeah, that's true. That's the weirdest part is Igor is one of the only other people in the world that actually travels. And he was like right there. The giant crater that was his corpse is like a mile from where his brother lives. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the lake at ground zero. When I first laid... This is Victor. It's brother Victor. Two and a half years ago. When I first laid eyes on the lake here at ground zero, I was blown away by the sheer size of it. I never imagined anything could be so huge. Wow. This was just after the Death Stranding, and not many people had seen the craters up close yet. Back when I was living with my parents and my brother on the East Coast, an explosion like nothing the world had ever seen tore a gaping hole in the heart of America. Whoa. There were all kinds of rumors floating around at the time that it was a meteor, that it was a nuke dropped by another country. I was just a kid, but even I could tell the adults didn't have a clue. So you can imagine how I felt when we found out that there were other explosions, not just here in America, but the world over. 
By the time we learned there, that they were void outs, and what void outs were, the country was pretty much done. But hey, that was then. This is now. And things are looking up. I just got told my kid brother's still alive. World is he's heading up corpse disposal team in Capital Not City. Handled his shit well enough to get picked up for the second expedition. Three more years and he'll be out here with me. Can't wait to see him again. <laughs> what? But weren't they both on the East Coast, so neither of them were gone? I'm confused. The geologist. Uh. In their personal shelter. I remember. It was just before I joined the expedition when I found those documents in Bridges HQ. Research papers that predated the Death Stranding. People used to believe that dinosaurs had gone extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period, 65 million years ago, but when his fellow investigated various locations where late Cretaceous dino fossils had been found, he came to the startling conclusion that there was hardly any evidence anywhere on Earth that supported the theories that dinosaurs had survived until the end of the Cretaceous. In other words, almost all of them had been wiped out long before that. The only place where there were fossils that did support the traditional theory was here, in North America, which suggested that this was the last part of the Earth to have been inhabited by dinosaurs. Not everyone agreed with this analysis at the time, but let's say he had it right. That would mean that there is evidence of a mass extinction hidden here, right beneath our feet. Evidence which could prove invaluable in understanding the one on the horizon. Did the dinosaurs who happened to live here just get lucky? Or is there something special about this place that allowed them to survive? I'd love to get to the bottom of it, but I'm not sure I have what it takes. I'm not like Hartman. I don't have dooms or any other unique traits. Still, I want to make myself useful. I want to research the stranding and help uncover the truth behind it. That's why I joined the expedition team, after all. So apparently America's special, because like we said, we don't know if- we don't seem to see Mexico, and we don't know if Europe's around. Yeah, there's a lot of confusing elements there. So apparently, the, uh... dinosaurs only live past that Cretaceous point in, Amer in North America. In America, because like I said, I don't see Mexico. Mexico seems like a tar pit from what we saw. <laughs> Maybe it's there. I'm not sure. I don't understand how this map works. But apparently we're special. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> I guess all the other extinctions were regional before, even though they're supposed to be mass extinctions. Like they're mass extinctions, but it sounds like they were all regional before, and because based on this one. Well, this one just says that only they only lived past that point in America. It sounds like everybody died in one region. Everyone died everywhere except for America. Yeah. It's just weird. But there's like exceptions, I guess. Because it's Interview with special. the paleontologist, the person who should actually be talking about I dinosaurs because they're a paleontologist, paleontologist and not a geologist. This person didn't discuss anything about That's geology. That's what I am. That's what I am. This person didn't <laughs> even discuss geology. They, t they discussed paleontology, which is this person's job. <laughs> Uh, you guys, in the there was a- okay, I'm sorry, I have to talk about this. There was a Skechers commercial, like, like, eight years ago, and I don't know why I still remember it, and it had a bunch of kids running through a museum with dinosaur bones, and there was a song that says, I am a paleontologist, that's what I am, that's what I am, that's what I am. Why? And I don't know that song, but I don't know, I've never fucking forgot that stupid ass commercial. <laughs> and it has like little zoom-ins of their shoes as they run past the dinosaur bones. And I always remember thinking, kids, it's a museum, you can't run past that. <laughs> I swear... You're supposed to look at them. Look it up, because I can't not see that word and not think of that stupid Have song. Have fun, everybody. Sorry, I took, I took for you all. paleontology. It was fun. Okay, now you can continue. I had to like get that out of my system. In the period since the first forms of life arose here on Earth, the planet had witnessed a number of mass extinctions. And as you are no doubt aware, the most significant of these is known as the Big Five. The first marked the end of the Ordovician period, while the next, at the end of the Devonian period, wiped out almost all marine life. But the third of these extinctions not plural for some reason, at the end of the Permian period, around 250 million years ago, was even worse. 96% of all marine organisms and 70% of all land organisms died as a result. For the record, I think these are all real. Uh, I think I remember these. I'm not going to like look it up right now, but I think I, like there are a series of mass extinctions in, the, in our history. Uh, and they might even be one-to-one -one correct as the ones that are being cited in this game. Uh, that is a thing. But the third, uh, but the third of the extinction at the end of the Permian period was about 250 million years ago. It was even worse. I already read all that. The fourth extinction finished off most large reptiles. 
though the dinosaurs managed to hold off until the fifth came along at the end of the Cretaceous period, 65 million years ago. We, ha we humans were evolved from the small mammals which managed to survive that particular catastrophe. Each of these five extinctions resulted from enormous changes to the natural environment. Species were unable to adapt to these changes and perished, while those which were ideally situated to evolve and thrive did just that. Evidence from records which predate this death stranding indicate that many scholars believe the sixth mass extinction was on its way, or that it may have already begun. There, yeah, it's the humans. <laughs> just so, yeah, it already happened. Yeah. We already extinguished most life on the planet, just so we're clear. It, um, <laughs> I feel like we're going to look back at right now as the sixth extinction period, because humans already wiped out most of the biodiversity of the planet. You know, tardigrades survived all five mass extinctions. Yeah. Also, so, those, so those, those five like, are correct. So a lot of, like, crocodiles. <laughs> and so on. Good, good, I like them. I'm glad they're around. And maybe the giant squid, I don't know, I have no idea about the giant squid. There's something of a consensus regarding its cause as well. Humanity's destruction of the environment. Ah, shit. I was, I was, I was ahead of it. <laughs> I was ahead of it. Here it comes. This led to, the, to them to sound the alarm, warning the world what was at stake. At the, at the time, <laughs> the greatest nice. science of the era believed that if the ecosystem could be preserved, and if humanity could learn the, to live in harmony with nature, uh -uh, then, a, then a future could be secured for all of the world's species, humans included. But that was then, and this is now. If the phenomenon we are currently experiencing is indeed the sixth extinction, this may be acknowledged that, acknowledged that the humanity is its main target. Is this divine punishment for our misdeeds? If so, then I suppose there is little that can be done. Perhaps there is no way forward for humanity now. Nevertheless, I refuse to give up. I will endeavor to find hope in our predicament. They say the destruction of the environment, I think they mean, like, global warming and stuff, but, like, a lot of it was us explicitly hunting down and killing all of the animals. Well, and also <laughs> like, just and taking wipe, up all their space. Out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that is actually correct. Like you were telling that sad story about the wolf that, like, like is, like, the last of its kind, never seen for de for generations, and it's like, oh, Shot they're, immediately. They're, they're tracking its, they're tracking its migration as it went back to its, like, where it, where it, where it, it's, it's kind of would migrate to, and the moment it got near, like, a suburb, it immediately got shot by, by the, the locals. Yeah, see, that's, that's like, was sad. every once in a while, there's a situation where, like, a, a, an animal that hasn't been seen for a very very long time like like the one that we we presume will be extinct will just show up somewhere but oftentimes we ruin the situation immediately by immediately killing it there's there was another one that was like a it's white like, oh that's why they're all dead like a white <laughs> deer this happens still the time a white deer which is like an amazing anomaly like they hardly ever exist they're really important in like native american cultures yeah uh live to be an adult, which, by the way, is, is incredibly amazing, because they don't live very long, usually get killed instantly, was shot by some kid in a neighborhood yeah. whose dad gave him a gun and told him to shoot it, and they have this beautiful white deer, like, pictures with it, and everyone got ama amazingly upset, because, like, the likelihood of that deer even existing is amazingly unlikely, and it means a lot spiritually, Yeah, and they just shot it. It's just shit like that. People are assholes. That's all I'm trying to say. But um, anyways, <clears throat> yeah, so that's correct. There are five mass extinctions. Um, they are yeah, the Ordovician, Devonian, Permian, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous, Tertiary. Uh, tardigrades live through all of them. Yay, because they're extremophiles. Yep. First one was in the Paleozoic era. So 40... 40 440 million years ago, 85% of all living species were eliminated, uh, possibly due to continental drift, they think. The second one was about 80% of species died 375 million years ago. Paleozoic there's some, there's some really era. weird outcomes. Like, I think that, like, the continents moving over time can change the ocean currents and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it changes the temperatures and everything about how it works. Well, this one, this one is because of the lack of oxygen in the oceans, quick cooling of air temperatures... And volcanic eruptions. Everything started suffocating. Well, because the Earth That's was crazy. settling. So for yeah. a long time, the Earth was settling, and and, and animals were evolving Things faster. Were just fundamental change. Then the Earth could settle, and so when the Earth was finally start to settle, right, later, I think it was the Earth was settling faster than the animals could evolve. Well, so animals <laughs> would evolve, would and then the Earth change, and would, then they couldn't do anything about it. Would change a little bit more than they would. Yeah. Um, the Permian. It's Mass extinction the, was 250 million years ago. 96% of all species were eliminated. So that's very high. 
as asteroid strikes, volcanic activity, climate change, and microbes, potentially. Yummy, Yummy microbes. Triassic Jurassic is probably the one that we think of the most. <laughs> <laughs> Mesozoic era. More than half of all living species. It actually was the smallest one. Uh, major volcanic activity with basalt flooding, global climate change, changing pH, and sea levels of the ocean. And the fifth one... Uh, maybe that's the one we think of. 65 million years ago, 75% of all species died. This is the asteroid meteor impact one. Yeah. So that's the one people think of. This is this last one. Yeah, the big one. It's weird for them to talk about it being divine punishment for our misdeeds when all of the other ones were for non-sentient creatures. <laughs> well, this one is funny because this website says, The sixth major mass extinction happening now? Question mark. And then it literally has a picture of a guy next to a lion that he hunted. You found the article that Kojima read when he made this game. <laughs> Whether or not humans survive has not been determined. Whether or not human beings will survive the next extinction has not been determined. Of course it hasn't been determined. You can't determine yeah, that we're still here. until it happens. Somebody else will have to finish that article. <laughs> Many scientists Some alien believe that, that we are. Our planet will have to wrap up that like what website? Thought Co article. Yeah. Just give a nice little rundown there. Yeah. Um, also, I want to say that commercial was a Payless Shoes commercial, <laughs> and the song was by They Might Be and Giants. Dead now. Uh, they are dead. They no, might, be might Be Giants. Is the people that did the uh, Malcolm Middle Sound song. And a bunch of stuff, in um, general. I like their, um... I feel like they also did the theme song to House. I think they just particle kept... Man, <laughs> Particle Man, doing the things a particle can. It's, I just find it weird that this this thing contextualizes the... Is there something at the door? I don't know. This thing contextualizes uh, the final uh, extinction as being divine punishment. I'm like, but it's already happened five times to things that there wouldn't be a reason to divinely punish. <laughs> Well, apparently none of those things existed because the Earth is only, uh, what? Don't you? <laughs> I had one of those people. Uh -oh. I think I told Sorry. you before. I had Sorry. like a, I had a young Earth, I had a young Earth still? person in my geology classes. I'm like, how do you exist? <laughs> like, it's like, it, it, where are you contextualizing all of this as you being like, learning this all as like fan fiction, like you're studying the Marvel universe, but it's our own history, but you don't believe in it. 